I'm going to show you how to animate a clock and add some realistic bounce to the ticking movements, all in After Effects. Welcome to the channel, I'm Ryan, and this is Motion Methods. In case you want to follow along, assets are linked in the description below. The clock UI I'm using was originally a sketch file, so if you want to know how to import it into After Effects, Check out my previous video linked in the card above. In any case, this method will work with any analog clock. All right, so here we are in After Effects. We've got this clock UI composition open and just a few layers to work with. What we're gonna do is have the second hand drive the animation for the entire composition. So to get started, I'm gonna hit R on the keyboard to bring up the rotation property and add a keyframe at the beginning of the timeline and another one at the one second mark. I'll change that one to 6 degrees, um, that's because 360 degrees divided by 60 seconds is 6 degrees per second. And then um, I'm going to hit option click on the stopwatch to bring up the expression editor. I'll type in the expression loop out um, and then just play this back. And what we'll see is, um, this actually isn't very helpful. It's just going to loop the, um, the same two keyframes um, over and over again. And what we actually want to do is have the loop begin from where the last loop ended so that it increments. So we can do that by adding the parameter offset um, to the loop expression. So when I do that, you'll see it actually will increase um, for each second that goes by. So that's great. Um, and now what we want to do is um, link the, the values of the minute hand to the second hand, as well as the hour hand to the minute hand. So I'm going to hit R on the keyboard here, option click um, for the rotation value, and drag this pick whip over to the value of the second hand rotation value. And so that adds this expression. And I'm going to divide that by 60. Similarly, I'll click on the hours layer, option click the rotation value, and use the pick whip to select the minute hand, and divide that by 60. All right, so now all of the, um, all of the hands will be moving um, uniformly according to time, um, but it's still going to be, the second hand is still moving smoothly. And what we want to do is add some bounce in there. So we're going to add some more keyframes. So at the 10 frame mark, let's change that value to 8 degrees. Actually, I'm going to look at the graph editor for this. And then say, I don't know, 18 frames. You can change that to five, and then let's end this um, at 30 frames. So half a second in, it should actually be done animating. So to six. I'm gonna select these, let's smooth these out. Um, actually, I'm gonna just select these two. That looks, that should be okay. Um, Let's play that, Let's see what happens here. That should give it the bounce that we're looking for. Here it's not playing in real time, but um, that's, uh, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so the other thing you might wanna do is, you don't wanna mess with these keyframes too much because you want these second hands to be pretty much as is. So you can add a, um, an angle control effect. So I'm gonna go here and type in angle control and add that over to the second hand layer and then in this expression you can go plus and um, drag that pick up over to the angle value so that it adds it in there and basically now you can drive you can you, you can change the time to whatever you want so you can move it up you can see the seconds are moving um, if you want to do it faster, you can change by revolution. You'll see the minute hand moving and the hour hand is also moving. So 
um, that's great and um, it'll just pick up where it left off so if I go back here and I just play it back you'll see it's still ticking away um, and, and that's great now let's add it into um, let's add it on a composite on an Apple watch so I've got this 3d render of an Apple watch and I'm gonna drop this clock composition on top of it and then I'm gonna use the corner pin corner pin um, effect just double clicked on it to add it to the clock layer there and I'm just gonna move these corners roughly where they should be something like that and um, I'm gonna change the blend mode to screen so I mean depending on what your clock UI is uh, it might I mean here you could barely tell the difference but um, typically you would if you're new here which you likely are because this is a new channel thanks for being here if you're interested in seeing more UI animation tutorials and workflows, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out.